Welcome to Kentucky Route Zero. This is an episodic adventure game. It's been a long time in the making. It's made by a very small team, and the first episode came out in 2013. However, the fifth and final episode, which has yet to come out, is scheduled to be released sometime in early 2018. So it should hopefully come out quite soon, so I figured now is a pretty good time to get into this game. I've heard it's absolutely excellent, so let's jump in with Act 1. So I believe we're a truck driver driving over what I guess is called the Kentucky Route Zero. I'm not sure exactly where we're headed. An old hound and a straw hat. Both have seen better days. Aww. Moving truck rumbles softly to itself. Painted on its side are the words Life sets antiques, furniture, glassware, curiosities. Let's take a look around. Oh, they're following me. Is that our dog? Like, did it come from the tr truck? Is it traveling with us, or... I'm not sure. I hope it's gonna come with us. I played for just a couple minutes just to check the settings and get used to the controls. It looks like there's two ways to move around. You can just do the more traditional point and click, but you can also just hold down the mouse button and your character just kind of moves in the direction you're pointing, basically. An interstate highway, 65, running from Alabama up to just shy of Chicago. It ought to be quitting time in this part of Kentucky, but the daylight just won't shake. The sun just won't go away. It's gorgeous. Come on, doggy. <laughs> Look at those big floppy ears on him. Ah, so let's look at or talk to. Joseph sits between gas pumps and a Queen Anne armchair. His hair is gray and his glasses darkened. Damn, did you hear that wreck? Truck full of bottles. I don't know, beer bottles, whiskey, lost a tire or something, and spilled booze and glass all over the interstate. What a mess. If they don't come down here looking for anything. We blew a damn fuse and it's all shut off. Oh, that's why this place is all dark. That's why they've got a lantern. Did I hear a dog? What's your dog's name? Oh, I get to choose. Oh, so it is my dog. Awesome. Homer, Blue, or just some dog. I don't know his name. Oh, come on. They definitely have a name. Um... Blue. Her name is Blue. Blue sounds like a sweet old hound. I used to know a dog like that. Hey, here's some jerky for Blue. I made it myself. It didn't turn out too well, but I bet a dog will eat it. Getting late, right? I can feel the sun on my neck. I bet it's just a few feet off the horizon. Oh, right, they're wearing darkened glasses. So I think... I think they're blind. Hmm. Been driving all evening looking for five dogwood drive. Or got a delivery to make, but I'd rather watch the sunset. I think I'd rather watch the sunset. Yeah, it's the truth. You've got to stop and breathe in that road. I bet while you're out driving, you let your eyes wander up the tree line and you just... Well... I bet you're more of a poet than old Joseph. 
Do you like poetry? Well, I just like to listen to the TV. I used to do a lot of poetry on the computer, but I don't have the ear for it lately. Listen, you and Blue would have been driving up and down 65 all night. Dogwood Drive is on the other side of... Well, to get there, you've got to take the zero. Oh. So to get to Dogwood Drive, we're going to take, I guess, Kentucky Route Zero? I wonder if this entire game is just a drive to Dogwood Drive. The Zero is a tough route to find, but you can use my computer to look up directions. You'll have to head down into the basement and reset the circuit breaker first. I'll be happy to have those whining lights back up anyway. It's too damn quiet out here. Basement door is back there in the office. Appreciate your help, friend. Oh, and, and here. Take this lamp. It gets dark. Is this an inventory? Or... Oh, that's a lamp. Oh, cool. Alright, let's give that jerky to, to Blue. Um... Actually, how do I do that? I don't... Do I have an inventory? Not through there. Um... Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it'll come up later? I want to keep talking to him, though. Just head back into the office and you can't miss the stairs. Breaker box will be somewhere on the right side of the room down there. Ah, we gotta do that first. Okay. Fair enough. Let's go take a look. game's gorgeous. Wait, are there people down here? Basement people. They're in the dark. That's a little creepy. Gonna check them out in a second. A dusty, rusty sign is bolted onto the wall. These are the rules. No open flames near the gasoline. No consumption of beer or spirits on the premises. In case of sudden darkness, do not panic, relax, count backwards from five. Strictly limit time spent in the basement to fewer than three minutes of every hour. Hmm. Worried about the fumes affecting you? Is that it? Emily, Ben, and Bob sit in folding chairs behind a worn card table. Papers, oddly shaped dice, and highway maps cover the tabletop. Okay, but why are you all in the dark? Conway clears his throat. <clears throat> Have you all seen a breaker box down here? Uh, oh, sorry. Didn't know there was anyone uh, down here. Oh, these are options. <laughs> That makes more sense. Uh, have you seen a breaker box down here? Emily, to Bob. Did you hear something? To Emily. Uh, no, sorry. I was looking at the rules again. To Bob. It gets easier as you go. Look, you said you rolled a five, right? That means you get to pick up your marker and move it anywhere on the map. Now Bob to Ben, so it's your turn now, right? Ben to Bob. Oh yeah, I guess so. Where'd you put that 20-sided die? Emily. I don't see it. Did you drop it? Bob. Uh, should be easy enough to find. It glows in the dark. That... Are they real? <laughs> are they even real? This feels strange. So it glows in the dark, huh? Huh. Conway picks up the glowing 20-sided die and inspects it. The number 5 is facing up. It's just a small piece of plastic, but it has a reassuring, almost comforting weight. He places the object in his jacket pocket. Will they 
acknowledge my existence now that I have their- Oh, they're gone. They weren't real. Folding chairs are arranged around a worn carn table. The chairs are empty, and the surface of the table is bare. Hmm. Place the die or keep it? Let's keep it. What a strange encounter. I wonder what it means. Ah, nice. Feels like whether I placed that die on the table or kept it has some sort of cosmic significance. Oh, it's finally night time. There it is. Just listen to those lights whine. Yep. Uh, well, I'd better get those directions and head to the zero. Oh no, right, these are options. Uh, there were some people down in your basement playing some kind of game, but they're gone now. In the basement? No, I don't think so. Maybe that lamplight was playing tricks on you, huh? Well, strange things happen underground. Especially in the dark. So, computer's in the office. You're looking for Marquez. She knows her way around those roads. She'll get you to the zero. The password is... Uh... Damn. I usually just feel it out. Muscle memory, you know? It's kind of long. Kind of like a short poem, I think. One of those short poems that really sums it all up. You'll figure it out. I will? <laughs> okay, if you say so. Well, I guess the simplest explanation given the sign we read in the basement is that it was just gas vapors making me see things, but... Eh... I don't think so. Still want to give that jerky to Blue. Still can't seem to. Hmm. Alright, choose that computer. Conway taps a key, waking the computer from its reverie. What's the user? Joseph or Conway? Well, I mean, if I give it my own name, it's not going to know who I am, right? So, Joseph? Password? Hmm, let's see. I wouldn't be surprised if there's no wrong answer. The stars drop away. The moon throbs. You just breathe, road. Password accepted. <laughs> That's so cool. I guess I just sort of made my own poem. Joseph, shouting. How's it going in there? Figuring it all out? Sure you are. Messages, address, book, games, exit. Uh, I guess I want the address book for, what was it, Marquez? But let's check out the other things. What about messages? Message one is from Donald at hotmk.mail. Message two is from accounts at consolidated.mail. Let's read message one from Donald. Subject, fragments dim of lovely forms. Joseph, I know it's been a while and I know you're still sore, but there's a whole world in here and we need your help to unmask it. Yes, the caves are cold and damp and we are old and lame. 
Never mind. I can't remember why I even started writing this. I miss those days in the lab, with you and our dear Lula. Maybe you found your own Xanadu. Well, so have I. End of message. Miss those days in the lab. Let's read message two. Account standing, urgent. Dear Equus Oils, there is an urgent automated message your account is overdue by more than 14 days. We've switched you to our low reliability, dirty power plus plan. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound good. Consider making a payment immediately to obviate the need for us to switch you to Sustained Brownout Select. <laughs> Sincerely, your friends of the Consolidated Power Company. Take a look at games. Computer games is not real. Well, alright then. Address book. So I'm supposed to look up Marquez, but I could also just look up Dogwood Drive and the Zero as well. Well, let's do Marquez first. Marquez Residence, 100 Macondo Lane. Head northeast on 65 and turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. <laughs> look for the barn at the base of the mountain there, can't miss it. I wouldn't be surprised if I have to actually pay attention to these directions. I'm not going to assume it's just going to take me there, so... Um, turn left as soon as you see the ugly tree that's always on fire. Well, if it's actually literally on fire, that should be pretty easy to spot. And then look for a barn at the base of the mountain. Tree that's on fire, barn at the base of a mountain. Got it? Out there in Macondo somewhere, right? Yeah, that's it. Uh, hey, look. While you are down there, I loaded that old TV of mine into your truck. I brought that thing from Weaver Marquez a number of years ago, and now that the power's all weird over here, I can't pick up anything but static and public access anyway. She was always more of a reader, but maybe she'd want it back at home. It's a nice TV. So can I go back and look at the other ones? No, I can't. Just messages and games. Games are still not real. Still not real. Ooh, I can talk to Blue now. Can I give him the jerky? Conway scratches behind Blue's right ear. How's it going, Blue? How about a treat? Here's some jerky from the gas station attendant. He reminds me a bit of your old man, Ira. Do you miss that guy? Uh, no, he was a good man. A good boss. What do you think of this place? Seems like they're really on the rocks. Good blue. That was so cool. Sun's gone down. You and Blue better get on that road if you're gonna make your delivery. Alright then. Goodbye, Joseph. Conway gets back in the truck. Conway stays for a while. Oh, it's an option. Let's get back in the truck. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, stop. Okay. <laughs> this is also a point and click interface. Um, alright. What is this? 
notes, Marquez Farm. Can't click on notes, Marquez Farm. Uh, northeast on 65, turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. Okay. That's cool that you actually get to navigate. Okay, so this is northeast. Uh, I mean, I don't think the map would show any trees, so we'll just keep going and see what happens. Oh. Burning tree. A tall black oak burns on a hill above the road. Why? I'm, I'm sorry, how is this tree always on fire? That's a little bit odd. Okay, supposed to be at the base of the mountain, right? So like, oh. Here we go. That's really cool. I love that you don't don't just magically go there. You have to actually navigate there. Not that it's hard or anything, it's just, you know, thematically it feels good, it feels right. See, same description? Yep. Same for blue, yep. Just check it. The street lamp lights the base of a dusty path leading up the hill. Come on, Blue. Let's go. <laughs> Blue's really taking their time. Or maybe they're staying with the, the truck. I think they're staying with the truck. A family graveyard is set off to the side of the house. Headstones are inscribed with the surnames of the unfortunate. Nowakowski... Padilla and Marquez. Before I go in, can I go off this way? Nope. Light switch? Ah. Um, shouldn't I have knocked? <laughs> uh, Weaver, I was just thinking what a lovely house we have. Do you like it? Have you been here before? Did you happen to see an owl? Uh, that's a lot of questions. Um, I've never been here before. I know. It must seem very strange to you. I was here when this house was built, so it's never been strange to me. There used to be another house here, but we had it destroyed, and we built this one. It was very expensive, and we got quite underwater. What do you do for work? Is it too difficult, or do you like it very much? I was once a mathematician. Are you looking for something in particular here? What a strange person. <laughs> Which question do I answer? Uh, I drive deliveries for a small antique shop. I believe it's hard times for a small antique shop. It's hard times everywhere, even out here on our little farm. My parents stopped paying the bank a while back. I shouldn't even be here, but I just stayed. I have some notebooks. I'm only a little bored. I might prefer to watch TV occasionally. Oh. Actually, I think I have a TV here that I think belongs to you. Will you please set it up? Then I can explain to you how to get where you're going. The Zero. I know. Okay. That's not how it's supposed to look. You've made a mistake setting it up. Is it a foreign object to you? Which of your parents was it who wouldn't allow you to watch television? <laughs> what? 
I know how to set up a TV. Okay, I'm skeptical. You have it all backwards. I'm not surprised. Are you? Have you been paying attention? I don't think you have. It's time to start paying attention now, Conway. Look closely at the television. Hey, hey, wake up. You spaced out for a minute there. Hmm. The picture on the TV. That TV's picking up the wrong signal. My cousin Shannon would know more about it. She fixes TVs for a living. Oh well, she used to. I think the new models are giving her some trouble. Your cousin? That's my father's brother's daughter, Shannon. We're about the same age. Well, we used to be. She's older now. She has a workshop up north a ways, by the lake. Right where Peonia and, and Wax Road meet. It's a big bait and tackle shop and she fixes TVs in the back. Do you like fishing? Honestly, I'm not convinced you should bother with the Zero. I'd much rather you find my cousin and fix my TV. But I'll get you headed the right way. So, it's pretty easy. Get back on 65, heading north. Then take the first right, after the artificial limb factory. From there, your arrival at the Zero is basically inevitable. Nice to know you, Conway. Keep your eyes open. Especially in the dark. Okay, this time it definitely wasn't just gasoline fumes. What is going on? Oh. An abandoned spiderweb stretches across the bottom of a saucepan. A skillet is seasoned with dust. Got a band playing for us. I guess it's up to me where I want to go, huh? Head for the Route Zero or go to Shannon Marquez's workshop? Fix that TV. <laughs> Alright, um... The workshop. Up north a ways by the lake, right where Piano and Max Road meet. It's a big bait and tackle shop and she fixes TVs in the back. Well, I definitely want to go there first. This delivery can wait. So, 
up north like this way? Mammoth Cave Road. I hope. Oh, museum. What was it? Peonia and Wax Road meet. Well, I haven't seen either of those yet, but what about this museum? A sign in front of the building just reads museum. The lights are off, but the front door is open. Huh. I mean, let's go. Conway steps through the museum's doors. A few feet inside the museum doors, the ambient sound of the highway drops sharply away. The room is cold, dark, and still. A book lies open on a table in the center of the room. An open hallway extends to the left. Large glass doors bar the path ahead. Oh, this is so cool. Let's take a look at the book. There's no title on the book's spine or cover. A three-word phrase written in pencil on the first page is smudged and indecipherable. On the first page, someone has left an ink drawing of a horse. Several dozen blank pages later, at the end of the book, is an elaborate ink drawing of a one-legged man working an antique adding machine, surrounded by whiskey bottles. Let's go to the hallway. Conway's steps echo against the hallway's marble floor and arched ceilings. Plexiglass boxes line the walls. The hallway dead ends on a darkened display case. Let's look at the boxes on the walls. The first box, just a few feet into the hall, contains an assortment of bird wings. Some are missing feathers. One large, brightly colored wing almost glows in the moonlight. Its feathers are intact, but a piece of bone pokes awkwardly out from the tip. Ugh. Let's look at the darkened display case. The display case is several yards wide, but just a few feet off the ground. It's unlit, and back in this corner of the darkened museum, very little moonlight creeps in. A gold-plated plaque on the surface of the case is a bit easier to read. It recounts a short history of foul hunting in the region, and then speculates abruptly about the nature of addiction. <laughs> Let's go back to the entrance. Let's go through the glass doors. The glass doors won't budge. To apply any more force would likely break them. Oh god, I can break them? Well, I mean... I'm not going to do that. No. I guess that's it. That's so interesting. So there's like an element of open worldness to this game, I guess. So where are we at now? Let's see. Brownsville, Morgantown, Anetta. So set up north a bit, but neither of these roads match. Nolan Dam. Union Light Dog Creek Road. I'm just driving the back roads. Gap Hill. Cherry Spring, Priceville. Cub Run Highway. Oh, here we go. Good, I was worried I was totally heading the wrong direction for a second. Wax Road and Peonia. Yep. Conway pulls into the bait shop parking lot. Vaulted above the road on a thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live bait, minnows, small and also large for, for stripers, nightcrawlers, chips, and beer. A green flyer hangs loosely from a bit of masking tape at eye level. To the shop's right, a dark parking lot sprawls unevenly into grass and then eventually trees. The bait shop is open. Let's read the flyer. Computer printed type in a bold font surrounds a clip art illustration of a TV set. The TV has eyes, arms, and legs. Its shoulders are slouched. On the screen is a cartoon expression of exhausted nausea. A hot water bottle rests against its wire antenna. 
TV repair, no model too old, inquire within. We do not sell digital converter boxes. Let's go inside. Narrow aisles crowded with lures, reels, rods, and snacks divide the shop lengthwise from the entrance to the cashier's counter. The left wall is lined with churning tanks of water. Let's look into the tanks. The three metal tanks aren't labeled, and the water is too agitated to get a clear view of what's inside each one. The contents of the first tank are vaguely gray, the second is a muddy pink, the third is clear. But shiny silver flecks occasionally flash along its surface. Uh, let's not reach into any. That's so cool when you get closer to the tanks. The, the sound of them actually gets louder. Very nice little touch. Let's go to the counter. A wiry cashier stands behind the register, preoccupied with a Sudoku puzzle. Let's ask about Shannon Marquez's workshop. A handwritten sign on the door behind the counter reads, TV repairs by appointment, please consult with cashier. The cashier knocks a few times on the door and waits, occasionally glancing at his puzzle. After a few moments with no answer, he notices a smaller note written on the sign, reads it, then points it out to Conway. Alright, what's the note? Weaver, I got your message. Have left for the old mine. We don't know if I will see you there or what. I don't know if I will see you there or what. Ready either way, Shannon. The old mine? Ready for what? Ask about the basketball game? The cashier switches on the radio. An AM sports broadcast is playing, but Conway can't be sure if it's meant to answer or to drown out his question. Huh. Well, I'm curious what will happen if I put my hand in one of the tanks. Let's see, the second is a muddy pink. The third is clear, but shiny silver flecks occasionally flash along its surface. Let's go for the third. The water seems to tremble with life. Conway can't tell if his hand is being nibbled by fish or massaged by the artificial current. As his eyes near the surface of the water, he can see something colorful glowing faintly at the bottom of the tank. Reach deeper. A tremor spreads from his elbow out to his fingertips and up to the base of his shoulder. His vision flickers. The water is running warm, under his skin now, and he has a sensation that something is about to snap. His eyes close. He lays on a rooftop, new shingles rough beneath his back, swelling in the noon sun. He's exhausted. They must have started before dawn. His legs are sore from holding stable on the uneven surface, his wrists from breaking old sealant his fingers from carefully lifting shingles to hammer down new ones. His boss, Ira, yells from the idling truck below. He shades his eyes with his hand. A beer would be good. It's barely past noon, but he's worked a full day already. What could the harm be? Maybe a shot at the counter just to get his eyes open. Then a beer. He could offer to drive into town for lunch and stop at that place on Cumberland. The cashier pushes Conway roughly on the shoulder. He's been talking, yelling maybe, but it's all an echo now. Conway looks up, his neck stiff with pain, his right palm still tingling. The cashier points to the tank, then above it to a few holes torn in the wall. Nail holes from which an electric sign has come dislodged and fallen into the water. He helps Conway to his feet, looks at him pitifully, and returns to the cash register. An electric sign, so wait, did Conway just get electrocuted? Huh. <laughs> Should I try my luck with the other tanks? Anything more to do at the counter? Nope. Okay, let's leave.
So, the old mine. Well, it can't be too far away, right? In fact, I wonder if it could be here. This looks like a dead end. Mm. Nope. Let's look up here. Can't go that way. Can't go that way. Hmm. Maybe over this direction. Wheeler Mill Road. I really want to find this mine. I'll drive every single back road if I have to. Back on the highway. Oh, what's this? Factory. Well, I better check that out before I leave it or I might forget it. But I think I'll save that for the next episode. So yeah, my thoughts so far. This game is really good. Uh, I'm really curious what's going on in terms of why Conway keeps seeing all these strange things that don't seem to really be real. I have a feeling that this isn't taking place in necessarily the real world, but maybe some sort of dream-like... like, dreaming about all the stuff that happened in Conway's life, perhaps? And all those different elements are kind of mixing together, maybe? I don't know. But I'm very curious, and so far, it's, it's so well made, it's gorgeous, and I didn't expect it to be sort of like open world, and a mixture of kind of somewhat a little bit traditional point and click, I guess, when you go into those scenes where you can actually, you know, point and click and use objects and whatnot, but also sometimes it's just like a straight up text adventure. Like when I went to the museum, and you didn't explore it really visually, but just through text. But even when it's just text, like at the bait shop, there's some audio elements that reflect what's happening in the text, so it's really neat. Yeah, I, I love it so far, so I hope you've enjoyed it so far as well. And I'll be back soon to check out the factory and hopefully find the old mine.